Hello everyone, this is Alice from Prince George's County Memorial Library System. I wanted to welcome you today. What we're gonna be doing is a very creative program for drawing Marker Madness. So this is uh, thinking about in, in March that you do have the, um, the little celebration of the basketball, meaning uh, the March Madness. So that's what we're gonna be thinking about, you know, the shape of the basketball and also the circles that are uh, a motif that we can work with today. So what I do have here, now uh, with the markers, there are so many different markers people can use. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the equipment. So what I have here, we do have very thick markers and they can be permanent or they can be water-based. So you can have the thick as well as um, the highlighters that can be used as well as uh, some other thinner point items that you can have. This one has like a brush end on this one and then another part of a, a straight marker on that end. So yeah, everyone can work with what they have. If you do have also, there are metallic markers. And uh, another thing that is always very useful is having just your plain pencil to work with. Pencil and paper, and eraser is always good, at least as, as far as using it with a pencil. Now, um, with the shape, I have a few things that I was uh, working with to get that circular shape that we're talking about. Now, at the very beginning, I did show, this is the, why I have a little phrase here, drawing is the art of taking a line for a walk by Paul Clay. That's the image of what I had shown in the front of the presentation. So we're gonna be taking our little line and it's gonna go for a walk, okay? Uh, what I have here, this is a circular motif that I've been working with various, actually top lids. So if you have things uh, at your house that you can use, these are just lids that we can use as like a little template for someone to just get used to doing the circular mo uh, motion and having something to work with. If you feel like, oh, well, I can't draw a straight line, I can't do a circle. Well, these will also help. So I have different, different shapes. You can get them from, of course, peanut butter jars <laughs> and other things that, uh, so you kind of look around the house and see what you can repurpose for this. Uh, also, if anyone has like little corks, like cork bottles, that will give you another little round shape. And you can also use this in, in other art projects as, as far as using it with stamping and other things and in, in later on when you want to do other projects. Now, when you're doing drawing, you're thinking about, well, what kind of paper do I use? There are all kinds of papers that you uh, can do. Now, if you only have like computer paper, this is fine. Because what we're going to do, we want to have the exercise of the motion of, of drawing and just enjoy ourselves. Uh, it's good to just take a few moments to get the eye hand coordination and just kind of relax and take a just a sigh and do something for yourself. Okay. Now, what I have here in regard to that, just uh, this was just on computer paper and it was kind of cut down. I was doing it as like a little sketch. Now, um, even paper bags like Vincent Van Gogh, also when he was uh, didn't have all the supplies everyone uh, needs to have at uh, at that time, and he is very was very resourceful. You know, it's like bags, paper paper wrapping. So this also requires that you can have like a little tone to work with. Because a lot of times people get very intimidated when they see like the blank white sheet of paper. So um, that's, that's fine too. You can have a toned item. And um, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to remove this. Now I just wanna give a little, little close up shot of this. Now, what I've done, I've used some of those little top lids that we're talking about, and you can just go and make a circle. Now this one down here, and actually you can see you can do it from different angles. This is like I was trying to do like a little bit of a, the basketball, imagery and that could be darkened too. But it's like a work in pro process. And when you're doing these exercises, you just want to, to let yourself go. It doesn't have to be like a final product. We're, we're just trying to, to get used to drawing and then get in the moment and just let yourself go. And you don't have to worry about 
things in your life and the world situation, just let all that go. So I just want to give that as a little close up there. Now, when we're doing these things, there are very, uh, aside from the paper, you, you know, you can also just use uh, a blank paper cup and uh, be doing the designs on the, on the bottom. You could also put like a little message or what you want to do there and then do a design on the outside of the cup. And then later on, you can, you know, put your pencils and other things in it. And, you know, it'll be kind of weighted down if you put some of like your erasers and other things that you have. So you can use that. Um, this is what I started out with in the first place. And this is just a blank white bowl. So that's what you can do. Now, in doing that original item, I went ahead and just did the circular motion just to get your arm going and used to drawing. So you would just go ahead and, and pick, you know, I might think of what color I wanna do. And then you can just, this is a clickable one too. You just go around with that circular motion. So that that is getting your arm used to doing that. And again, you can still do it with the other lids, but this is what I did. And I like putting a little phrase in there, uh, a quote from um, an artist or, or a favorite writer or whatever makes you, know, you feel about maybe yourself, you have another goal or something you wanna do, just put that in there too. When I did that, other one, I started out with one of the highlighters and just did that as the base. And then, because then you want your, your phrase to be on top of that. So you wanna think of like from the back to forward on that one, okay? This also gives a nice optical illusion, as you see, as, as, as I turn it, it, it becomes all kinds of shapes as it gets closer. So that's because of my drawing. Now with this drawing, I just took my little drawing, my little line and took it for a walk. And I just went around all of the curves of, of this. Now, uh, I, I like it like it is. Now you can also fill in the colors, but I thought just do that little continuous line and just let it, it go over the surface. So that's like showing uh, a little description of what the surface is by just going in and out of, of, of that um, item, your little, little, little um, bowl that you have. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And then you can, you know, keep this and you can do other types of um, artwork with it. And all right, so let's first, I'm going to get a larger sheet of drawing paper. All right, now what I suggest is take a moment and just go and be, what I would say, wild with what you have as far as your, uh, your drawing material. So here we go, let's go. And we see that that is a very thin line. So just go and do as much squiggles as you want. You get an idea of how color and the image that you want to do. Now this is one where it's a thicker marker. So just go, just go wild with it. See what you want to do. Okay. Here is a little highlighter and we know the highlighter. This one, the quality of that one is very fluorescent. And as you can see, I'm not making anything except scribbling. Now, um, using the two-tone ends of this, both ends, this will give more of a, a flow and another element to something so you can see how the strokes are with this, okay? As opposed to the other end, which you can use this one, which is like a finer, finer point. And that's a little light. So. so I suggest, you know, just taking a moment and then doing that first. Now, um, what I wanted to do next 
you can probably just flip this one. When you're doing shapes and tones, as if when I did this, you can see I did just do the squiggles inside there. Now, um, one can also do the strokes like in one direction, like this, just like a hatching. And there's also cross hatching. Going that way, and also this way. And again, you can just use the entire arm for that. One can also do like little, what they call stippling, where you just will do little dots, like pointillism. And again, depending on what marker you have. So we can uh, go ahead and, and again, you can just see all the darkness that you can get and just get that expression going, all right? So we'll take a, a few moments to do that. Um, here we go. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to do my pencil. I'm not going to take. Now you can do, you know, this on, uh, I guess, a flat table. But the reason I use an easel for a lot of things is uh, because whenever you you just want to see how it is without without getting any distortion in anything. So here you see this, this, this gives you the idea of the circle. So then you can just go and use another one and place it near it and just get used to going around. And on a table, it will give, give you a little bit, get a little bit more defined circles. These are like little templates it can use. And you just wanna go and experiment with what you're having. Now, um, as far as starting out, you can just take one of your items, just think of, of all like doing the circular motion and just being free with what you're doing. So whenever you're doing it, you want to be able to uh, kind of relax and, and not be too concerned about the final product. And, and with this, you just will do, you can do many more of them. So I just wanted to give you an idea of of how you can work with markers. Now, uh, with this, you can also like fill in, do solid, do solid areas. And that is something that you can just go and take a moment, think, well, I guess I'll do that color. Get some more uh, definition there. And then if you want to just, so just getting used to doing, the circular motion. Uh, with uh, when you're doing other shapes, basic shapes, like if you're doing like a, I would say more of a, uh, like you think about like a, a can, which you are doing, it's again, you're just wanting to let be expressive with that. And other shapes that you might want to work with, of getting the um, basic shapes and to go ahead and describe the tones. You can make something a little bit more expressive that way. Lay around with it, more of like a cone. That shape. So there's all, all types of shapes that are going to be making up um, different items. So you can look around your house and see what you do have to work with. And so this is, uh, let me go ahead and do this. This is like that little cork. You can work with this too. So that, well, actually, it's kind of a shape like that. But you can just go around and just to get the curve and just go ahead and give yourself just a little bit to work with. Now, okay, so when you wanna go ahead and do this, you can start out with uh, finding out all of the things about the different markers you have, the thickness and the thinness of the strokes and the colors. You might wanna think of what color you wanna use and then a little expression that you wanna put on, on your little bowl or, or actually on, the, on your little uh, sketch. You can do that too, kind of combine everything. So just start out with this if you like as a, 
as just a, I guess, beginning point. And then just go ahead and do the circular motion there and then have your markers and just fill that in. And then take your, take your little line for a walk, as Paul Clay would say. Now, I would like to also tell you about some of the things uh, in the library that may help you with, with uh, doing your creative work. When, we, when you're on our website, you can go on online library and then online resources. And we do have a link where you go to the, the wording support suite, then you will see the creative suite. Now there, you can also do what we have as artist works, where you can um, also see videos of different, uh, different media and have um, explore that a little bit. And also the creative bug that has all types of videos that you can follow through and uh, to your heart's content with all types of crafts. There's also the EBSCO Hobbies and Crafts Reference, where you can get different articles and supportive material for that. I also like RB Digital, and uh, that has also parts of the magazine. The magazines have now gone on to the Libby app, but I do like the also the, the coloring uh, books that they do have in there. To give you an idea, you'll see the, the different patterns that you can use, and it really does uh, work out nicely. So I hope that, um, yeah, with all of this, you can just get started. Whenever you uh, are working, it's always good to maybe have a little music on to further uh, enhance, I guess, the experience. And just uh, feel free to go ahead and make the mark on the, on the piece of paper or uh, bowl and whatever, whatever you choose to do, then, uh, then you can then just, um, next time you'll just have the, a little bit more familiar with it and just, you know, let yourself go with that. So it's very, uh, very nice. And I enjoyed uh, speaking with you in regard to this and uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and I'll go ahead and close with my little sketch here.